Welcome to Broncos Country tonight. We have a fun show for you this evening. Malik Reed is going to join us coming up in a little bit. Has had a fantastic start to training camp so far. We'll get into, in this segment, what we have seen. And then at the end of the show, we'll get into what we expect to see for the remainder of training camp. Benjamin, let's start there first, though. What have we seen in these first 10 days of practice that has impressed you? I think you've seen a re-energized football team. I think you've seen an offense that believes that it can get the job done for the defense this year. I think you've seen a defense that believes in that offense. Um, and I, I think that each other is elevating each other's game. I think you see a defense that goes out there and say, hey, we got to step it up and put it on this offense. They want to be a great defense again. Uh, and, and they were a good defense last year. Top 10 defense, number one in the red zone. They were a good defense last year. But I, I think they want to return to the the form of 2015 of greatness. And in order to do that, they're going to have to get after the quarterback better. They're going to have to generate more turnovers. They're also going to have to have a complementary offense. And, and in the end, the best teams in the league don't do it with one. Be Some, sometimes you can have a dominant defense and just an okay offense to get away. But to really be a special team throughout the course of the regular season and pushing into the postseason, you need a complementary offense. Being 28th in scoring on the offensive side of the ball simply isn't going to get it done. Do you think the Broncos have done enough through the offseason in this first part of training camp to put the offense in position to be better than that? I think so. I think they have. I think this team is be is better off dramatically than it was a year ago. Uh, I think you've got the right quarterback in there now. I think you've, it, you've added an infusion of speed uh, that, that forces corners to, to honor the deep ball, and you've got the quarterback who's willing to throw it. Um, I, I think you've, you've added some interesting... Uh, additional pieces you know now you've got two running backs that, that bring a, a skill set that's um, that, that terrorizes defenses you've got two tight ends with a lot of speed you got one humongous tight one monstrous tight end that you know is a tough matchup for anybody uh Cortland Sutton continues to mature and grow Jerry Judy's been a, a revelation really um you know and so I, I think that you've I think you've added enough I think you've added the right pieces and oh by the way you I think you got better at the offensive line I think the guard you added is significantly better than the guard play you had last year so I, I think you've got a better overall offense let's go back to Drew Locke because the thing that keeps being said is command of the offense he has command of the offense but we've seen that with Joe Flacco we've seen that with Case Keenum why do you think it's different this time well, hell, Trevor Simeon had command of the offense. Uh, it's, it's less about command of the offense and more about command of the football, uh, where you're able to put it. And then Drew Locke is, is good at that. Drew Locke is able to place the football in places that his receivers can make a play on. He understands working within the confines of the offense, but he also understands how to extend plays with his legs and also how to extend, how to extend the field with his arm. And so, you know, I, I think that he's a lot better than uh, – uh, than having Joe Flacco back there who, you know, could, wasn't mobile anymore and defenses knew that and kind of teed off on it. And so I, I think that that's going to add a better dynamic. We saw it last year. He only had a couple of sacks, I think, uh, what, five total sacks in those five games uh, that he played in. I, I think that, that we saw flashes of that last year, and I think we're going to see the full unfolding of that this year. One of the things that I've liked so far in the, the first 10 days that we've watched is there haven't been the dramatic swings in performance from the offense. So, you know, we noticed in years past, as I'm mentioning Flacco, I'm mentioning Case Keenum and Trevor Simeon, there'd be days, and, and sometimes even stretched into several days, of the defense just completely blowing out the offense. It wasn't even close on the field. It looked like two, di two different squads performing varsity versus junior varsity kind of time. And I know that sounds kind of cruel, but that's just what it, it appeared. There were days, there have been days where the defense has won, but the offense has battled and they never let it go to two days in a row. It was the offense responded the very next day. The offense even had a couple of days where they win. Do you feel like it's been a little bit more balanced? It's been more balanced this year, yes, than it has in quite a few years. Um, the offense has not been perfect, but it's made strides. Um, and then they've taking their taking their time taking their shots um I, I think the defense has had two or three days where they've really kind of put it to the offense i think the offense has had one or two days they've really put it to the defense the other day has been fairly even uh, and that's what you want you know you you want a mixed bag the last thing you want is one side of the ball dominating the other side of the ball beating down their spirit before you even start the season so uh you know i think this is good i think it challenges the defense too the defense hadn't been challenged in a while it's good to see them getting challenged out there Definitely. How have you seen the what on the defensive side of the ball? Let's go this way on the defensive side of the ball. What impresses you the most? For me, it's the pass rush. That defensive front has been just unbelievable. They, they are the most consistent group out there on both sides of the ball, uh, getting the, the interior pressure, stopping the run, getting to Drew Locke or Jeff Driscoll, whoever's back there. I feel like this front seven is going to be really special this year. I, I do, too. Uh, and not to take anything away from the new fly zone back there with uh, with all the new additions in the second. 
secondary, but the front seven is, is really going to be the key that makes this thing turn. And, uh, you know, Jarrell Casey has been an absolute monster down there, a wrecking ball. Shelby Harris is just as good as he ever has. Uh, Mike Purcell's look phenomenal. McTelvin Ajim keeps getting called out by the offensive line as being a player that's just so, so tough to block. Draymond Jones out there making plays. Even Demarcus Walker's getting in on the action. And because he's so far down the pecking order, we're just not not mentioning it as much. And then you look at the outside, you got Chubb and Vaughn, or Chubb and Vaughn, but, you know, Malik Reed is out there looking reinvigorated with a great first step on top of it. So, you know, I, I really do believe that front seven is going to be the, the key that turns the engine this year. Okay, so let's go to the offensive side of the ball. What impresses you on the offensive side of the ball? Uh, the, the infusion of speed. These guys are just faster. Uh, last year, it, was, it really became a problem. Defenses did not respect the deep ball whatsoever uh, on this team. I mean, you have Cortland Sutton, who's a great receiver, but he's not the fastest guy in the world. Uh, but he, he has such a great catch radius that everything is, is, you know, in his wheelhouse. Looking beyond that last year, you, you know, Emmanuel Sanders had clearly lost a step and was coming off the injury and just wasn't the same guy. They just didn't have the speed. And so this year when you got Tim Patrick out there, who's a great long strider. Uh, you got Jerry Judy, who has incredible speed. You got K.J. Hamler, who's all world speed. Uh, and, you know, in Cortland out there as well. And then Fant and Okwe, but you got just a, a lot of speed out there. And I think that's what's impressive to me. It seems like that's going to be one of the challenges, one of the things that they're hoping to throw at opposing defenses. And as we mentioned, the interior offensive line play has been pretty good. Offensive tackles have actually been a little bit better as well. So definitely some things that are working for the offense as we continue to see development from Drew Locke.